Let's make a shabby chic junk journal together. I will show you my process start to finish and in this part one of two, I will share which digitals I chose, how to prepare the printed images, how I put together my signatures and what else I use to decorate the pages. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is a design team project for the Digital Collage Club. And if you're not familiar with the Digital Collage Club yet, it is a membership based website with thousands of royalty free digital collage sheets, vintage graphics, scrapbooking, card making and digital craft supplies, as well as lots of fun tutorials. All images are created especially for this club and each week new images are added. Also, you can sell whatever craft items you create with these images. So there's an annual or a lifetime access and I have discount codes for both linked below for you. Please note that I do receive a commission if you use these links. So you will be supporting my small creative business as well. So thank you so much in advance if you sign up for this club or if you joined in the past using my link. The first step of my process is obviously to choose a theme and the way I came up with that is I just browsed the Digital Collage Club website and chose images that were to my liking and I found that Tina has a lot of shabby chic papers in her shop and that is a theme that I have never chosen <laughs> and so I wanted to challenge myself with this journal to try a shabby chic junk journal. The papers I have downloaded are not 100% shabby chic papers. So you will see here I have butterflies and I have some feathers and, and, and other images which are not strictly shabby chic, but I would did want to mix it up just a little bit. I didn't want to go only to this like pink lace kind of theme. I do want to kind of mix it up because otherwise it wouldn't be me. <laughs> So I've printed the background papers that I'm going to use double sided and a tip for you, maybe this is logical, but maybe it's not. So I want to mention it. For example, I have a very simple inkjet printer. It's a Canon TS5050, nothing special at all. It's not even expensive or anything. And of course I cannot just print double sided like you would with a big expensive printer where it just prints one side and then loads it again and print the second side. Obviously, you know, cheaper printers don't do that. So what I do is, for example, this kit, which is the French ephemera paper has six pages. So what I do is I print the first three pages, then I flip the paper around, put it back into my printer and print the other three. And that works great. Just be sure if you do that to not flip the paper over the wrong way, because otherwise you'll have one side looking this way and the other side will look this way. I have done that so many times by mistake because I didn't pay attention to how the paper was in the printer when it came out. So that's just a little tip. And then these four here are the shabby and grungy paper pack. I love these so much. And you will notice obviously that these are square. So I think actually that is awesome because it will automatically give me a variety of papers for my journal. So I do plan on folding these in half. And I wonder actually, maybe these are, these are almost like traveler's notebook standard size. Actually, I'm going to try that. So this here is a standard size traveler's notebook. And look at that. That would fit exactly. Well, uh, maybe it's just the tiniest bit too tall, like a 16th of an inch. But basically that would fit pretty nicely. Now I'm thinking whether I should just make a traveler's notebook. Originally, my plan was to use these, which are the vintage pink paper collection. And there's just four papers in there, which I again have printed back to back. I don't know if you can even see that these are light pink, but they are. And I was going to fold these in half and then use these, of course, as shorter papers. But now I'm really kind of thinking, I like the idea of making a 
traveler's notebook style journal and that's what i'll do cool just changed my mind i love that okay <laughs> we are going to stay flexible with our ideas all right so these will be my papers i will mix them up with some more plain papers i don't know now whether i will use these or not i still could and maybe fold them in some way i might just still do that but i will definitely add some other papers and then these here some of these i've already cut out so you can see here some of the butterflies there are more than these on the paper that i chose but these are the ones that i thought would fit best with the colors and then i have like these lace holders butterfly lace holders i have these cute tags then i have these feathers i love these feathers they look very boho but i think i can make them work in this type of journal as well maybe some of them anyway then we have these beautiful butterfly bookmarks and then we have some more cards these are actually from a wedding kit but i think they're so gorgeous i'm definitely going to be using some of these images then here's some more and we have these french chevy chic postcards and we have these cute tea cards and the reason why i haven't cut these out yet is because i was thinking i have to back them anyway with cardstock or something so rather than cutting them out gluing them onto a cardstock and cutting them out again i might as well just glue the whole thing down on the cardstock and then just cut them out once i think that is a bit more economical <laughs> So I will continue and film again once I have something interesting to show you. It's now the next day and this is as far as I've gotten. I've spent many hours last night backing all of these printables with cardstock and inking everything up. <laughs> it was a lot. And for the tags, I also added rose gold eyelets, as you can see. So they are all ready to go and there we have our four bookmarks as well this time i didn't use my vintage photo to ink things up i think for a shabby chic journal softer colors are better and so i used partially the tattered rose distress ink and partially the victorian velvet i think both go really well with this oops <laughs> with this theme and as you can see i've also put together five signatures so let me quickly give you a flip through and you can probably tell that also the edges of some of these have been inked so i've really spent many hours <laughs> so this is a real vintage magazine from 1895 i just love this i do have to be careful because as you can see here it's already tearing so i will need to do something about that then I have some avocado dyed paper here. I have a video on how I avocado dye my papers. I will link that below for you in case you're interested. So this is an A4 paper that I just folded up because I didn't want to tear it. Then we have some more real vintage papers. And this is an avocado dyed envelope. And what I did with this is because it was too wide, I folded it and then I attached one of these avocado dyed papers to the end of it so now i have basically this page here and then this is of course the digital collage club print and so there's the other side of that signature that's number one then we have number two this is again from the digital collage club i added three vintage envelopes i think those are super cool some more avocado dyed paper, some music sheets, vintage. It's again, the Digital Collage Club. Then signature three, we have these that I showed you before. Again, I just folded this. And we have some more vintage paper. We have another vintage envelope. And the digital collage paper. I just love these. That's the fact that we have these cool advertisements. Then this is number four. Again, we have a real vintage German newspaper from Frankfurt. This is 
Frankfurter Allgemeine Newspaper von 1942. Avocado Dyed Paper, Digital Collage Club Paper. And here I have two envelopes. I cut off a strip about this wide on both of the ends of the envelopes and then I use those strips to connect the two envelopes so I have them on both sides. And in the middle, again, we have this beautiful digital collage paper. So that's number four. And finally, number five, again, we have this vintage envelope first and then digital collage club paper. We have some real vintage ledger paper here. We have again this fold out paper from the club. We have a dictionary page. Yep, and that's the end of the pages. So that's how thick it is so far. It's going to get a lot thicker, of course, with all our embellishments. So next I have a jelly plate one-on-one -on -one printing session with Louise to coach me. If you missed that video, it should be up before this one. I will link that for you below. That I'm sure is going to be a lot of fun. My plan is to print on some of these pages, especially the pink ones, because there's a lot of pink in here, too much for my taste. So I want to cover some of that up with some jelly plate printing. Let's see how that goes. In the meantime, I've had the pleasure of having some private lessons from Louisa Heinzel with jelly plate printing. And we made these three prints on book pages. Actually, this one is on copy paper, but these two are on book pages. And then I also made one on one of my avocado dyed papers, this one here. So this is a really fun one, I think. And I wanted to add some of these to my journals. Probably most of these will be added partially in strips. We'll see. But for this one, if you've seen that jelly printing video, you will know that I wanted to add a doily here. So I could either do that on this page, which would look kind of awesome. <laughs> or I think it would also work really well with this one here. For example, this third signature, I was thinking I could put it here on this avocado dyed paper like a pocket and then just wrap that around and have a doily like this. That would also be super cute. Mm, or I could actually do it on both. Why not? I can use more than one doily, right? <laughs> yeah, so I think I'll do that. I'll put the doily here like I had originally planned. Maybe I'll just do half because I don't want to cover up the whole doily obviously. So like this and then if I wrap it around like this I need to think about what to do here. But in any case I want to put one here. So I will fold it here and then I'm going to put some glue just right on the edge here because I don't know yet do I want that to be a tuck spot or do I want it to be just glued down, like the whole thing? I will make that decision later, but this way I know it's here and I can stay flexible with that. Yeah. So this one I will fold around my page. And this could be a tuck spot, but if I do that, I want to strengthen it since it's a quite a thin book page. And this one is just a pocket. So before I glue this down, I am taking a strip of another book page and adding that to the back here, lining it up with the outer edge. I just used glue stick for that. And so now when I glue that on, it will be a lot more sturdy. So then I'll just add some glue here on the edge and on the bottom. And I want to do the same on this side because I want to have a sturdy pocket here as well. I don't, have, don't want to have to worry about tearing. So again, I'm going to take a book page. This one is a bit more tricky because of course I could cut this straight, but I actually love this torn edge. So I have to kind of try to replicate that with my book page. So I will first just glue this one. Okay. 
And then I will try to carefully tear along this edge. Okay, and now I can just glue down these two sides. Okay, we have a sturdy pocket now. And I have this heart, this doily heart. Maybe I can add that. That would kind of be nice because I have the circles here going around like this. I think that would look cute. And on the back here, oh, these are two. What do we do on the back? I could either just cut it or what if I fold it? No, that looks weird. Could still be a tuck spot if I leave this here and I just glue it up until the end of the edge here. It could still be used as a tuck spot. Let's try that. Yep. Have to put in something bigger, obviously, that you could see through the doily. And if I don't like that, I guess I could still cut it off. So I will continue adding some of these papers. I also have these, which on their own don't look very spectacular, I realize that. But I think when we just use parts of it, I think it will look totally different. Okay, so I've added bits and pieces. Let me just show you how I did that. For example, I tore strips and added it over the places where I have joined the two envelopes just to hide that overlap. And I think it really adds a fun, colorful accent. Here, I did it on the other side as well. Here, I added a strip as a tuck spot. Here, I just glued a piece down and I think it provides a really cool accent behind this envelope and it takes away some of the pinkness. <laughs> Here I made a pocket. Here I just glued down another strip for another accent to break up that pink. Here again I put the strip where I had joined the envelopes. Same thing here with another color and here and here I didn't put one yet and I think what I'm going to do here is add one of these bookmarks. Maybe the one that has the most blue because my papers have this blue in it and I can just add it like this as a tuck spot. So I will be doing that. And then I have another pocket here and I added another doily but I think I'm just going to sew that in. I'm not going to glue that in I think just so that I have these doily distributed evenly. So I have one in the first, one in the third, and one in the fifth signature. Here I added another strip as a tuck spot. And lastly, I added this here as another tuck spot. The next thing I want to add is bits of my snippet roll. I made this quite a long time ago. All I did was I took a strip of masking tape and tore scraps and placed them on the masking tape on the sticky side so that way you don't even need any glue. And then I went to my sewing machine, machine, my sewing machine and sewed along the whole thing with a wide zigzag stitch in beige. If you don't have a sewing machine, obviously you just glue. And this isn't decorated up yet, so that means this gives me the freedom of having something ready to go, but I can still decorate it up further. So my idea was, for example, this makes great belly bands. So maybe here on this envelope, I can just add a strip and that would make a really cute belly band. And I think this is too white, so I will go around it with my vintage photo distress oxide just to make it a little more vintage looking. So I will add some strips to the journal in various places. And since this is a shabby chic themed journal, I of course want to add some lace and I am so lucky to have such amazingly beautiful lace in all kinds of different colors. I think this is a great opportunity <laughs> to use some of these. 
So for example, I mean, these belly bands are quite plain at the moment, but I think we could add some lace to these. For example, I have this one. Could cut these three off. Yes, it would cover most of the belly band, but that's okay. You still see bits peeking out, or I could just add one of them for like a small accent. Or I could also maybe cut out one of these beautiful flowers and add it here as an accent. That would also be gorgeous. Actually, I like this color a lot better for this here because it's a really beautiful creamy color. So I will go ahead and try that and cut out this flower and then we'll see what that looks like on that belly band. Okay, I've cut this out now. I think it's so cute. And I love it up here, but I think it still could use something underneath. This is too pink. What about this? Is such a beautiful, like old pink. Maybe a little less of this, but I think this color is gorgeous together with the other one. Let's cut it a little more narrow so that we see at least some of the snippet roll underneath. Like this and then like that. Yes, I love that. So I will just glue these bits down with my textile glue. So here's our first accent. And of course, this adds a huge amount of bulk to your journal. So I would say it really makes sense to make the signatures before you make the cover. Otherwise, you will have a huge gator mouth in the end. But if that's your thing, then <laughs> please do that. But I try to avoid that. This page here has a crease because that's how the magazine was folded. I kind of tried to disguise it here with this tuck spot, but I also want to disguise it here because it is quite visible. And I think I can just cover it with this beautiful blue lace and again make that into a belly band. For this page, I thought I would add this beautiful lace. I think this is the perfect journal to add something like this. But I think it kind of looks a little plain here so i'm thinking of adding this beautiful lace underneath on the top to just give that a little bit more body that would look something like this and then maybe i could even glue that on just the three sides so that it actually is still a tuck spot that could be cute as well so i will try to do that so i first glued that delicate lace onto the other one and now I just put glue on these three sides and I'm going to glue that here. So now they can just hang down like this. I think that's a really fun element. <laughs> I have another belly band here. So on this one, I will put these three. This time I think it's easier to just glue the snippet roll instead of putting glue on the back of the lace. On this back side of my envelope, I want to add a pocket with this beautiful lace here. My first instinct was to cut this straight <laughs> because I always work with rectangles, but then I thought, you know what, let's leave it crooked. Let's do something different. <laughs> and I'm trying to be okay with things not being perfect, but more organic. It's a process, definitely a process. <laughs> Adding lots of beautiful texture. On this page here, I want to add like a flip up, kind of like a curtain flip up thingy for some like secret journaling space underneath. So again, I'm just gonna put the glue on the paper here, which is easier. And I will do the same thing on another page with a lighter color of a similar lace. For this belly band right here, I decided to cut off 
a piece of this gorgeous lace here and I think it looks really nice as a belly band like this. So much cool texture there. And on this strip here, to break that up a little bit as well, we could add this beautiful lace here for some amazing texture. So I will continue adding some lace in some places and I will also add probably some tabs just using little scraps of lace and then just making fun tabs. So I've added some more lace as you can see I've also added one here and here you can see all the tabs I've added and this is the bulk at the moment so it has expanded quite a bit but it will expand more now when we add some ephemera so let's start adding some pieces so here this is quite empty here so I think this is one where I want to add a butterfly Oh yeah, I love this one here. No, it needs to be this way. And instead of the antennae, because I had to cut those off because those are just so delicate to cut out, I'm going to use some bunched up thread. I'm going to take purple. Usually I would take black, but I think for this journal, this purple is better. So I'm just bunching it up with my fingers this i will glue it first under the butterfly and you can of course decide how much you want peeking out and then let's glue the butterfly down so like that i know it doesn't look like antennae <laughs> but it just adds something there instead of just leaving it plain. I like it. And then we could add one of these cards maybe into our tuck spot. We could actually use her. She fits really nicely with this color here. Like that. So we have another one here. This is a tuck spot as well. Why don't we add one of our tags here nothing that blends in too much for example if i would use one of these they would kind of just disappear because it's too much of the same color one of these might be nice how about this one it's a nice contrast i will add some ribbons or something on the top there later i do also want something here and that's two butterflies after each other. That's a bit much. Oh, I'm wondering if I should just cut this out and put it there. We could add some feathers underneath. Oh, I like that. Even though I went through all the trouble <laughs> of preparing this tag, I think I now need to cut this up. So I cut it out. I inked up the edges with my Victorian velvet. And putting it like this again is very plain. So let's try to add a feather. I have this beautiful light blue one. So that's one op option. It's kind of maybe all too much the same color here. And I also have this pink one. I buy my feathers locally. You can also find them on Etsy. I think the pink is going to work better here. I am just going to add some glue to the, I used to call this spine, but I think it's called shaft, if I remember correctly. Whoops, from your comments, okay. <laughs> that was not planned. I want these to stay fluffy. I just want to put it on the spot. Oh, see, I say spine again, on the shaft here, because I really want it to stay fluffy. Like that. I don't know, I probably wouldn't have needed to add glue at all here because anyway, we're going to glue it down with this as well. And 
and I also like that the feathers stick out here that's very cute so that means now since we've added one feather we're probably going to have to add a couple more feathers to make it all look cohesive we have this pocket and why don't we look for it's not a pocket <laughs> it's a belly band <laughs> let's add a card here this is so cute could maybe add two here like that then oh yeah i added this here and we can of course stick another card here in this envelope or even two how about this one and this one they're so adorable then I have a very narrow belly band here. A tag I don't think is, oh, they actually fit. That is cool. I didn't think they would fit. So what shall we add? Since we have this dark thing here, actually, I think this one would look kind of cool. Although of course that color disappears. <laughs> yeah, but I like that. We could also add another one of these maybe. I'll decide that if I'm actually going to keep both. This here is a tuck spot. We could add a couple cards in here. How about... Oh, this one works really well, I think. T1. And I think this also needs two. Because the cards are quite small relative to the pockets should we do a blue one let's do a blue one maybe i'll add something here i don't know here is a belly band so this needs something maybe we could add one of these large lace holders they're so pretty let's add i don't know let's add this one and let's add another card because I think we really have plenty. Let's add this one. We have a little pocket here. I don't know if these, oh, they fit. How wonderful is that? So basically we have two pockets. We have the one from the envelope and we have this one. add one in here then let's add a card in the envelope how about this beauty here oops wrong way i <laughs> have this beauty here <laughs> and we can stick that in here oh and i see here there's a tear here so i will do something to cover that so it doesn't tear any further here of course we have a Top loading tuck spot. Got up some more colors here. We can just slide that up in there. <laughs> That's fun. Here's a belly band. How about this one? Gorgeous flowers. add a card to that as well this one two pockets actually three pockets here how about this tag in here then another tag up in there let's take this one And let's add a card in this one. I hope they will. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna fit. Because of the. Well, let's give it a try. Which one should we take? Should we 
take the blue. Or do we take a cozy tea one, huh? Oh, this is gorgeous. Let's try that one. Yes, it fits. How cool. So we have another lace pocket here. Let's add this one. We have a big pocket here. I don't think I'm going to add anything in there, actually. Oh, we have a belly band. I forgot to decorate this. I recently received this beautiful vintage lace from Maud. I think I'm just going to put that over there. So thank you again, sweetie. If you see this, you see I am treasuring and using <laughs> your beautiful vintage lace. I love it. Okay, so now we need something to put inside. I think this one will go really well with the flowers here. And again, let's add another one. Well, let's just use her. She's cute. We have a tuck spot here. Let's add one of these again. This one. We have another lace pocket here. This one I glued on so that some of the lace would be peeking out from the bottom. So we have another envelope here. We can add some more of these. We definitely need some more cozy tea things. For example, this one. And let's add one more card. How about this one? So these all make great journaling spots, obviously. Here we have this tuck spot with the bookmark. We can add another feather here. I will continue this throughout the journal until I've used up all my ephemera. <laughs> and then I will also add some ribbons to the tags. So I will show you all of that in the next episode and we will also be making a cover for this baby. <laughs> Hope to see you back here for that. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I love you guys. Mwah. Mwah.